the break time. Uh, as I keep on reminding you, uh, I mean, being online lectures and videos and so on, you can actually, uh, I mean, go and take a break anytime. But if you were in a class, then we would be doing this mental break. So for some time, you are sort of away from the lecture mentally. So this is a brilliant one about how men and women think. Of course, uh, as an atmosphere, it is somewhere in Europe, America, and so on. Female logic. The woman asks the friend or the husband, do you drink beer? He said, yes. How many beers a day? About three. How much do you pay for one beer? About five dollars, including tips. Until here, it's okay. Now look at the female logic. The woman, and how long have you been drinking? About 20 years, I suppose. So the woman, one beer costs $5. You have three beers per day. So per month, you are spending $450 over beer. In one year, this is a little more than, say, $5,500. Man, yes, yes, you are very correct. So in one year, you spend about $5,500. For the past 20 years, forget about inflation, this and that, you have spent about $110,000 on beer only. Correct? Man, yes, correct. Do you know? What have you done? If you did not bring, drink so much beer, that money put, could have been put into an account and by now, you could have bought a Ferrari. A Ferrari. Female logic finished. Male logic. The man asks the friend, do you drink beer? No, I don't. Where is your Ferrari? Good. So we were talking of quality assurance, right? We were talking of quality assurance and we tried to explain the difference between quality control and quality assurance and so on. So let us now read quality assurance is the total effort by the manufacturer to ensure that products conform to detailed set of specifications and standards. The total effort process must include in inspection of the incoming material, of the individual product components, of the assembled product, right, of testing the product. And when you combine all of this, then it is called total quality management or quality assurance. When you do inspection of only the product, then it is quality control. When you inspect all of these and try to improve the system so that you can get better results, it is total quality management. Now, we have told you earlier that we have to do statistical quality control. If you are in industrial engineering, then you can have a full elective course on statistical quality control. And even in the course on probability and statistics, we cover some part of it and so on. You see, we have to do what is called sampling. We have to do what is called sampling. Why? You see, a thousand parts are produced per day. I have told you, if we inspect each one of them, then inspection will take three days. Right? So therefore, we take a batch, say, the first hundred parts. From there, we take only ten and inspect them and decide about all of the hundred. Then from the next hundred, we again take only ten. So we inspect only samples and based on the results of these samples, we decide about all of them. So there is a lot of theory behind it, a statistical theory, that how it is done. So sample size has to be determined, random sampling has to be done, population characteristics have to be done, the lot size have to be determined. All of this comes under statistical quality control. Statistical quality control. We will very briefly mention it here. As I told you that in the basic course on probability and statistics, we will do a little more on that. And in uh, I mean, industrial, we have a full course on production and quality and so on. Now, there are two methods, methods of variables and methods of attributes. Variables means you actually measure length and breadth and thickness and diameter. Attributes, you just tell whether it is good or bad. Right? For example, if you do a go, no go gauge, a go, no go gauge. So you are deciding that this is good, this is bad, this is good, this is bad, without actual measurement. So you are doing by the method of attributes, engaging rather than in actual vernier caliper measurements. 
so a little bit of stats a little bit uh, i mean you you have done this in earlier courses uh, in sanivia and so on and if you have done the university course on probability and statistics you have done it if you have not done it you will soon do it but we are showing you frequency distribution frequency distribution what is it uh, for example from your class right uh, how many students are there between 40 to 50 marks how many between 50 to 60 how many between 70 to 80 right so we divide areas and in each area we find the frequency how many in there so for example right uh, we are measuring diameters here we are measuring diameters so here it is 12.95 to 13.05 so in this range how many only one in this range two in this range three in this range four so we make this diagram this block type of diagram this is called a bar chart bar chart because it is like bars so in each section from 10 to 20 from 20 to 30 from 30 to 40 how many are there so we do this bar chart based on frequencies then we join the centers of these to get this curve so this is now the frequency distribution the frequency distribution if you go to probability and so on there are different types of distributions the most famous is called a normal distribution right and it looks like this exactly like this bell curve so this is a normal frequency distribution so you are measuring dimensions you are measuring how many are good you are measuring how many are bad you are doing you can always have this bar chart and frequency distribution so this is a frequency distribution and when it has this type of a shape this type of a shape it is called a uh, normal distribution uh, any normal distribution which has zero as its average value plus on one side minus on the other side is called uh, a standard normal and if it is a distribution then we can find its mean on average and we can find something called its standard deviation a standard deviation and based on this we can have the lower and upper limits the tolerances that we told you earlier right so here the simple calculation that the mean or the average the mean or the average which we will call x bar add all the values divided by the number of values range is simply the maximum reading minus the minimum reading so this is the average or the mean this is the range a standard deviation sigma a standard deviation is this the value minus mean is square another value minus mean is square another value minus mean is square add all of these squares divide them by n minus 1 not n n minus 1 and take the root right because these are squares if you don't take the root then it is called variance variance s square it is the same thing x i minus x bar whole square right so x1 minus x bar x2 minus x bar so it is the same thing as written here so if you remove the square root sign then it is a square of a standard deviation which is called variance s square s square can also be measured like this x i square right x1 square x2 square x3 square sum them and here x1 plus x2 plus x3 sum all of them and a square so here it is sum of a squares here it is a square of sums right so whether you measure it by this formula or you measure it by this formula you get the same value which is called variance and the square root of variance is a standard deviation so you have mean or average you have range you have a standard deviation these are the three basic things which are used in statistical quality control